Hello everybody, this is Jamie, the teaching and learning coach for Merton and Carl Shorten College, part of the South Thames Colleges Group TLA team. And today is part two of my Nearpod introduction video. And today we're gonna to get down to the real detail of launching Nearpod in a live lesson with some participants. So my colleagues, Mel Coleman, Andrew Meadowcroft will join me for that. And we're gonna launch that within Teams. So we don't have to share screen. We don't have to split between two screens. It's gonna be shared as a lesson within Teams. So it's a really nice way of using Nearpod with full student engagement. Okay, so this is the Nearpod homepage. If you saw my part one video, I did a brief overview of how it all works, but I'm just gonna step by step go through this quickly for you now. So I'm gonna log into my Nearpod and my details are already stored. I've got Remember Me on there, so I'm just gonna hit login. And this is my homepage here. This is where all of your Nearpods will appear once you've created them. You can also, just remember, you can also explore already made lessons, um, but we're gonna look at actually creating a lesson from scratch. So we're gonna to go to this tab here, uh, and it is creating a lesson, or your own lesson, in Nearpod. Click onto that, and we want to bring in an existing PowerPoint that I've created, and then add some content and some activities from Nearpod before we launch it in Teams. It's really important that you work with Nearpod within the browser when you're creating your lessons and then you launch it within Teams. It sounds complicated, but it's very straightforward. Okay, so let's just upload a file. I'm gonna find on my desktop a presentation that I created about Nearpod and I'm just gonna open that within Nearpod. So as you can see, it's processing the file down here. Don't panic, it takes a bit of time but it will drop into your library. There's my basic PowerPoint uploaded in the order that my PowerPoint was in, which is good, but remember you can just click and drag and move around the order. So now we want to add in some content or activities. So in my introduction video, I showed you this briefly. Let's add some in now for the purpose of this Nearpod trial. I'm gonna have some participants. So Mel Coleman, Andrew Meadowcroft will be joining me. So let's just add in some content for them to try out as well. Remember this lesson doesn't really have a topic or a theme, so I'm just gonna drop in some random bits so you can see how they work. Just remember this content section is separate to the activities. So we're looking at content right now. So I could drop in a video, a slide, some web content, so I could put a URL in there. It could be to a quizzes, it could be to any external URL, and then the learners can click on that during your lesson. But let's just ignore that one for a minute and go to these 3D images, which we all love. Um, and they could be really, really good fun. I was talking to a maths teacher and they were saying they were gonna use the, um, the planet, so the Earth um, 3D image to talk about shapes, which is a really good idea. But you know, we all like dinosaurs, so let's just drop in a dinosaur, why not? So that's gonna drop in there. Um, it will appear at the bottom of your Nearpod. You want to just drag that wherever you want it. I want it just after the slide that says content here. So when the content slide comes up, the next slide will be an example of content add another bit of content in there as well so um, this is a simulation so it simulates lessons learners can get involved it's got lab simulations in there um, let's just put some maths in there shall we let's really challenge them today so let's drop that in as well and again remember it appears at the bottom we're going to put that just up here after our dinosaur let's drop in one more bit of content by clicking on add slide let's put a field trip in there where should we go today let's go and see the Taj Mahal, sunset, sounds nice to me. We're not going away this year, so let's just pretend. We'll drop that in there. But remember, you can drop in all these other bits of content as well. So you've got the field trip, which we've just seen, BBC video, so it's from the BBC archive, a sway, let's drop in a sway. They're really, really good documents that have content you can click on, so all the learners can click on as they go through. Let's go to Italy, Italia. So add in that sway as well and that appears down there let's drag it up after that add slide again if you want to add any more content in um, slideshow audio pdf viewer or live twitch stream i think i'm happy with the content so let's move to activities so now you can add in any activity you like from this list here um, i really like the collaborate feature where learners can comment we can discuss things we can have some q a so let's do nearpod as a title and Nearpod trial as a description. You can make that as long as you want. You've got 
this amount of characters here. So, um, well, more than that because I've added something in, but you get the idea. So let's just save that. So the Collaborate board has just dropped in here and I'm gonna add in one more activity and let's click on activities and we'll drop in a poll just to see what they think of Nearpod. So you can type a question, do you like Nearpod? Question mark. Yes, no, you can do multiple answers of this. You can obviously be a bit more detailed maybe, but I'm really hoping they click yes. Okay, so save that. That's dropped in, remember, at the bottom and you drag it where you want it. I'm gonna put it after this collaborate board. And I'm happy with that, I think that's great. Um, it's a good example of how you can add content and activities for the rest of my colleagues to see. Um, remember, you can add in more content and activities by clicking add slide here. But for now, I don't need to preview it. Order's fine for me. I'm gonna save and exit by clicking here in the bottom right hand corner, save and exit. Just let that process, it'll save it to your Nearpod account. And there it is, it's dropped in right here, all saved. So all my content and activities I've added into my existing PowerPoint, which I uploaded, it's all there, it's all ready to go. Remember, all of this stuff you create, so all the PowerPoints you upload, all the activities and content you need to add via your Nearpod account within the browser, and the browser is the place you go to access Nearpod. But now we're gonna talk about integrating your Nearpod within your Teams classroom or group. Um, so it's fully integrated, you can launch it straight from Teams. So, by the power of computers, we are now gonna head straight over to Teams. And here we are in Microsoft Teams. These are all the Teams I'm part of, but I'm gonna launch it within the Teaching and Learning Coach team, which is right here, so I'm gonna click on that. And you have this top bar here with all your files, notebook, meeting notes, etc. You can have lots of different apps up there. I need to add Nearpod up there because I want to launch it within Teams. So I click this Add tab here. Click on Nearpod here, let it load up. I'm already logged into Nearpod on the browser, so it will already load my, my Nearpods here. I want to select a live lesson. You can do student paste, which means they complete it in their own time, but for the purpose of this, we're gonna click live. So click on that. Title's fine, Nearpod trial, I wanna save that. And as you can see now, the Nearpod tab has appeared at the top of your team. So if you go to just the general post area and the drop down menu here, you'll find my Nearpod trial lesson. So I've put a post here saying, please click on the Nearpod tab at the top of the general post wall. And that's exactly where I will direct my learners verbally to click on it. So they'll enter in, move up here, click on the Nearpod tab, and they'll see this exact screen here, and they're ready for my Nearpod lesson. So in the next section of this video, Mel, Andrew are joining me to show you how Nearpod works in a live lesson situation. Down here, it says zero people attending. That should hopefully say three when they join in. Um, and here is the student names, which you can hide if you don't want uh, any comments to um, appear with the student names on because some learners might be shy to ask questions etc so that's a good tab but I'll go into more detail in a minute so I'll see you in a minute um, and we'll get down to the good bit which is the live Nearpod lesson. Hang on wait a minute before we move into Microsoft Teams and look at how Nearpod is fully integrated in the next section of this video I just need to let you know that you won't see Mel and Andrew um, being recorded on that screen they were there in my lesson I could see them they could see me as a teacher so the communication is still there but I'm using Screencast-O-Matic to capture this it doesn't capture the video within Teams but um, just before anyone asks me oh why can't I see my learners or why can't I see Mel and Andrew in the video it's just not captured in my video um, they were there I could see them they could see me and we could communicate fully anyway enjoy let's head over to Microsoft Teams and look at Nearpod okay and here we are in Microsoft Teams we have two people to try out my Nearpod to show you how it all works. So Andrew and Mel should have a tab at the top of the TLC team that says Nearpod trial. Can you see that tab? Yep. Uh, okay. Got a little as well. Great. So Mel can see that and Andrew can see that. You probably can't hear Mel and Andrew um, because the audio is just coming from my microphone. But just you know, just so you know, I can hear them, um, and it'll be the same in your lesson. You'll hear your learners. Okay. So have you both clicked on that? Yeah. And what do you? Okay, he's entered his name, and as you can see, 
at the bottom of this screen here is a number count. That tells me the students who are in my classroom. Uh, it gives me a number of students in there. So Andrew's in, just waiting for Mel to join. There you go, Mel's joined now. So if you click on that, you should be able to see Mel and Andrew. Andrew's cur currently in red. It might mean that he's got something running in the background. Oh, he's back. Were you clicking on some emails, Andrew? Yeah, so that's, that's a good point, actually. So when your learner icon down here turns red, it means the learner's moved away from that Nearpod. So you can kind of manage where they all are just by looking at that. Um, so this is my introductory slide or just the title. Um, and when I click this button here, it should move on Andrew and Mel's screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, good. They're both confirming it moves on their screen. This is a great tool, so you can control the pace of the lesson. So I'm just going to click on through these, and every time I click on, it will move on their screens. So as I click through, um, Mel and Andrew can still see me in the corner of their screen, so the learners will see you as a teacher in the corner of their screen. Uh, and you can obviously communicate with them that way. You can also, they can also send you a chat message if they want to, or ask you any questions outside of the Nearpod. But if we just click on now, this is the content slide, and this is the content that I added online. Um, you saw that at the beginning of this video. So as I click on, this content will appear on Mel and Andrew's screen. Uh, this is a dinosaur, obviously. It's a 3D dinosaur. And if they click, a uh, Velociraptor, there we go. Yeah, Andrew just said it's a Velociraptor. Um, and as you click and drag, both of you should be able to move it around. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, so they can rotate it, they can move it around. Uh, this is really good if you're using uh, these kind of things for um, biology. There's, there's animal cells. We've looked at that already in my first video. So it's another nice tool and feature that the learners can fully manipulate as you're talking. And, I, and also, if you pinch and zoom, you can zoom into parts of the Velociraptor, etc. Right. I'm going to move on. This is the simulation lesson um, that you can launch with your learners. Uh, this is a maths one. I wanted to challenge Mel and Andrew, but um, it's too, uh, Andrew said it's too. Uh, Andrew said it's too early for that. Yeah, I'm sorry. But you can drag from the little bowl at the bottom. Can you all drag in those squares individually? Yeah. Yep. So this is really nice to to do as an activity with your learners. This is for area. Um, this would be at the functional skills level one. Um, but they can all do this and submit their answers to you. Um, just to confirm, Mel and Andrew can do the same thing on their screens. So they, they're in full control of that. But I'm, I'm in control of the pace of the lesson. Right, I'm going to click on. You all did really well, by the way. 100% marks there. And now we have entered into the 3D tour of the Taj Mahal at sunset. So. I'm dragging mine around, and of course, Mel and Andrew can drag theirs around as well. And if your learners do have access to virtual reality or VR goggles, you can just click the enter VR mode here, and they can put those on, and they'll be fully submerged into uh, the Taj Mahal, or seeing the Taj Mahal in front of them. Um, so a really nice feature for travel and tourism, for example, or even if you're doing descriptive writing about a place in English. So can you all drag that around, guys, 360 views? Yeah. Yeah, so they can all do that as well. I'm going to click on, and here's a Microsoft Sway. So the way this works is, just so I can tell Mel and Andrew if I haven't seen a Sway before, you can scroll down. So you scroll down, and there's lots of different features that you can click on within that document. Yeah. Yeah. Do that with the mouse wheel. Yeah, with the mouse. Andrew's doing it with the mouse wheel. I'm doing it on my trackpad on my uh, MacBook. Uh, Mel's just said she's been there. Did you do the Did you do the photo, Mel? Where you pretend to hold it up? Yeah, everyone's done that one. <laughs> um, so there you go. That's that's a nice document. You can get lots of sways available, and that's a Microsoft program as well. So let's click on. Um, I haven't added any web links in because hopefully we all know what web links are. I explained what they were in the first part of this video. But if you do have a quizzes in there, you can put the link in there, and they can access the quizzes via this Nearpod as well. The benefits of having all of all of this here is it's all in one place. I can see you. I can control the actual Nearpod itself. I can chat to you. I can switch between um, different channels. So it's a really nice tool. Right, activities. In the first part of this video, I added in an activity and it was a collaboration board. So what you're seeing now is the prompt for the teacher. So it says here, would you like to approve student comments before they are posted? 
I'm going to click yes because I don't trust these two. Um, so <laughs> if you two could just type a comment and, and uh, click post, both typing away there. And as you can see here in my on my screen, I've got the number two, which means I have two pending comments. I've got Mel saying TLA team rocks and Andrew saying trust me, I can approve both of those. I trust Andrew and the TLA team does rock. Um, and also you can comment as a as a teacher as well in this box here. The good thing about this is if you're doing question and answer or Q&A or you want to gauge their understanding or they want to ask you a question, they can do it anonymously as well by hiding the student names in the settings. Um, and you can share that with the class afterwards so they can have it for a point of reference. So let's click on. And this is the poll I added in. And on Mel and Andrew's screen, they will just see the question, do you like Nearpod? And then the choice to select A, B, C, or D. So both of them have clicked yes, that's a relief. <laughs> um, and that's a nice activity there. What I wanted to show you was, I mentioned about how you can add an activity live in the lesson. So if I move up to this tab here, it says add activity. Mel and Andrew won't see this unless they're looking at my screen share but I'm going to click Add Activity. I have the option of adding in some web content, an open-ended question, a draw it function, a new slide, or a true or false question. And you can click any of those and add them in as your lesson is running. So again, you can have a bit of differentiation in there as you're going through your lesson. That is a basic overview of a Nearpod lesson. As I'm clicking through it, of course, it's going back on Andrew and Mel's screen as well. And the options are endless really. You can create a really solid lesson within Nearpod, um, especially if you're, if you're launching it within Teams because it's fully integrated. Right, so that was my quick guide to how to run a Nearpod lesson or how Nearpod works within Teams. Um, just want to mention that you do not have to screen share to launch this. This is all done in one place. All you need to do is make sure your learners join you in your meeting or in your classroom and they can just click on that tab and work through it and they'll, they'll see exactly what you're seeing um, in real time. If it's student paced and obviously they'll do it in their own time. You can get reports generated via Nearpod on this report section and the report will be sent to your associated email. Right, thanks for watching. Got any questions, please send them through.